Welcome to this rules overview of Brass Birmingham. I've got good news for you. The rules of this game are elegant, unfussy, you could say. But there are a couple of tricky concepts. Let's begin. In Brass Birmingham, the aim of the game is to get your buildings and your links onto that main board. And with the buildings, it, that's not enough. You have to get them flipped so that the side with the points is face up. Halfway through the game, we scan the board and any buildings that you manage to get flipped will score and your links will score as well. And then at the end of the game, we do this again. So the game scores twice and it's a game of two halves. In the first half of the game, you have to use your canal links and then after that halfway scoring, these are all removed off the board and uh, then you have to start all over again using your railway links. The railway era has begun. In Brass Birmingham, there are six possible actions that you can do. It's quite a lot, I know. Uh, and every turn you get to do two actions. Now, every action that you take requires you to play a card. But this is a bit strange, right? But all of the cards in the deck are based around the one action, the action about putting buildings out on the board. But I'm telling you that even if you do one of the other actions, you still are required to play a card, any card. So what you're doing in the game is you're managing a hand of eight cards and you're trying a lot of your actions. You're trying to play a card that you don't want. You're trying to hold on to the cards that you're going to need for those building actions. These cards are really valuable. So uh, it's a really tough challenge trying to hold on to them. And it's one of the most enjoyable parts of the game. Every player is going to get the same number of cards and actions for the game. What happens is on your turn, you play two cards and then you draw two and players just keep going until they've played through the entire deck and then you shuffle and redeal for the railway era and do it again. Your actions are the most important resource in this game. Uh, Brass Birmingham, it's all about making the most out of the actions that you have. Putting out those buildings and links cost money, coal and iron. Now coal and iron, you never hold on to in the game. You have to uh, buy it at the moment that you're going to put the building out. Therefore, uh, it's really money that you need. Essentially, the thing that you need in this game is money. So how do you get money? Well, there are two ways. Firstly, uh, remember I said that you need to get those buildings flipped if they're going to score. Well, when you flip them, the, you immediately get pushed up on this income track. You have a marker on there and at the end of every round uh, you receive the money. The second way is you can use one of your precious actions to take a loan. Uh, the problem with that is, is that you slide down the income track whenever you do that. So how do you flip these buildings? Well, for the steam engine, the brewery and the mine, uh, they get resources put on them whenever you build them. Uh, you'll see what beer is for in a second and players can use these resources and what happens is whenever the resources are all used up on the building it just flips over automatically and that's income and points for you. To flip a cotton mill or a toy factory it's a lot trickier. The building needs to be linked to its corresponding market and it needs to be linked to a beer. You need to coordinate those three things and then you can use an action to sell the cotton or the toys and the building gets flipped over and the beer gets consumed. A couple of details on that one. Uh, if the beer is on your brewery, it actually doesn't have to be linked. And whenever you sell, you can sell as many goods as you want in this way. So if you can line up multiple sales to do for one action, that's great. So how are you doing? 
the good news is at this point we've actually covered a good amount of the rules but the bad news is that uh, we're about to tackle the two trickiest concepts in the game so I hope you're sitting comfortably uh, let's get into it right number one the difference between coal and iron a tricky concept really well if you need iron for your building then you can just pick the iron up from anywhere off the board and if there isn't any on the map somewhere you can just take it from the external market paying the price similarly if you are building a steam engine that's going to produce iron and if there's space in the market uh, the iron on there is just going to go straight into the market and you're going to receive the money so that could mean actually that your steam engine gets flipped the moment you build it which is really very nice coal on the other hand if your building requires coal then the location you want to build needs to have access to coal either it needs to be linked to a mine that has a coal on it or it needs to be linked to the external market and then you can take the coal from the market and pay the price but if that location does not have access to coal then you can't build that building there similarly if you build a coal mine then the coal on there that's going to produce coal but the coal it produces is only going to flow into the external market if that location is linked to the market now with both coal and iron um, the resource can only flow into the external market the moment you build the thing uh, if it doesn't happen at that moment then the resources just sit on there until a player eventually uses them thematically what's going on here is that back in the industrial revolution if you needed iron you could put it on a cart and use the road but if you required coal uh, then you're going to need it in a much greater volume so hence the need for a canal link or a railway link okay it's time for the second tricky concept you're doing great hang in there uh, but before this I should mention that uh, in the canal era you can only build one building in each location and then in the railway era there's no limit to how many buildings you can put in the one location and the second tricky concept is to do with putting out buildings uh, remember I said that all of the cards in the game are to do with uh, putting out buildings well they come in two types you have the industry cards which allow you to build that specific industry but can be used in any location and then you have the location cards which uh, are used to build in that specific location but you can use them to build any industry you want but uh, this is not the tricky bit if you're using an industry card then your building has to go adjacent to one of your pieces on the board it needs to go beside either a building of yours or uh, one of your links and I didn't mention this but the same is true whenever you're putting a link out on the board it needs to go adjacent to one of your pieces so uh, in Brass Birmingham this would mean that you're always building into your own single network but this actually is not the case because of the next thing I'm going to tell you if you're using a location card you don't have to worry about adjacency you can just put your building down in somebody else's network so if you see a spot that has access to coal and maybe even a market that you're going to need and you have the card for that location well then you're really getting very excited uh, but just make sure that whenever you plonk your building there you tell the person who built that network uh, thank you because they're going to want to hear that but you're here for the rules right not the strategy that's another video 
and it's available on the channel. Just click the link in the corner. But wait, before you go, we still have two more actions to cover. The scout action is relatively simple. If you're unhappy with the cards you've been dealt, then you can swap some out for some wild cards. But do you want to be using your precious actions doing this? Not if you can help it. And finally, the develop action. In Brass Birmingham, instead of uh, putting out one building for an action, you can use an action to throw away two buildings. And this costs some iron. But why would you want to throw away buildings? Well, you have to build all of your level one buildings before you're allowed to build a level two and so on. And so the develop action is gonna help you get up to those higher scoring buildings. Plus at the end of the canal phase, after the halfway scoring, all of the level one buildings are removed from the board along with the canal. So they only score once. And so especially in the case of those expensive cotton mills, uh, the level ones are really rather rubbish. Thematically, why would developing a building cost iron? Well, a big innovation at the time was replacing the wooden frames of the buildings with iron ones, which that meant they were more protected from fire. Now I learned this and other cool historical facts about the board game uh, Brass Birmingham from talking to the Industrial Revolutions podcaster Dave Broker and you can see that video on the channel. Well that's not every rule in the game but hopefully this has provided a helpful overview of the board game Brass Birmingham. Uh, thank you for watching. Do consider supporting the channel with a thumbs up or a subscribe. Thank you for all of the encouragement I have received to keep on making these videos. Uh, I'll see you in the next one.